Good evening and welcome to the June 13th meeting of Aiken City County Council. County, Aiken City Council. <laughs> That's an old habit. We're going to have our invocation and our pledge. Our invocation is going to be led by Mr. Richard Johnston and our pledge is going to be led by Ann Dix. But before we have our invocation, and Mr. Johnson, if you'd like to make your way up to the podium, that'd be fine. I'm going to ask you to stand, and we're going to have a moment of silence for all of our, our fellow countrymen in Orlando who are in a lot of pain right now with their family members and a community. We certainly want to hold them in our hearts and prayers, and our response from Aiken will certainly be one that we hope is appropriate uh, for the pain that they're feeling and whatever we can do. So we're going to have a moment of silence, and then Mr. Johnson will lead us in our prayer. Thank you. May we pray. <coughs> oh, merciful and heavenly Father, once again, we come before thee. We come, Lord, giving thee thanks for all of the blessings that thou hast bestowed upon us. We thank you, Lord, that you have allowed us to assemble at this appointed place once again. And as we assemble, we ask if it is thy will that thou would bless our coming together. And we pray, Lord, that whatever is said and done, whatever decisions are made would be pleasing and acceptable unto thee. We ask you, Master, to, to continue to bless city council members, bless the city of Aiken, the state of South Carolina, United States of America. And we ask our Father that you would remember those that were killed in Florida. Bless them, our Father, and comfort them if it is thy holy and righteous will. These blessings we ask in the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ms. Dick. Ms. Ms. Dix is the president of the Neighborhood Association of Governors Aiken Park, and we appreciate her being with us today. Our guidelines for our meeting, this is a forum where we exchange ideas as a community, as a city. We ask that everyone be respectful of one another as we exchange those ideas and communicate them. We certainly seek your input on the items on the agenda. Feel free at, at the appropriate time when recognized that you may come up to the podium. Uh, so that everyone has an opportunity to speak. We limit our, our presentations to, to a five-minute time period. And we ask that, all, that as you speak, you would address all comments to the chair of the meeting. At this time, I would like to recognize Mayor Pro Tem Ebner for additions and deletions to the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, are there any additions uh, from council members to the agenda? I have, I have one that I would like to add under presentation. I'd like to actually number it presentation one to get it early if we could. And this is going to be a proclamation recognizing uh, John Win Winfield. John Winfield. So Are there any add. other changes? Oh, Mr. Mayor, I move that we amend the agenda as so stated. Okay, we have a motion. Second. 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 All those in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you. The minutes were given out previous to our meeting today so all the council members could look over them and check them out. Is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? I so move. Okay, we have a motion. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you very much. Moving down to presentations, the new number one, which is a proclamation recognizing John Winfield. Um, here, I'm going to ask for a motion and a second, then we'll read the proclamation and vote on it after, after it's read. So is there a motion? I so move. We have a motion. Second. Very good. I'm going to ask Councilwoman Price, if she would, to read that into our minutes. 
Chair, this is a proclamation uh, recognize the, recognizing the accomplishment of John Henry Winfield, uh, signed by the, uh, the mayor and city council members, and the proclamation read as stated. Whereas John Henry Winfield, son of the late Madison and Ella May Corley Winfield, was born in Aiken, South Carolina, the youngest of two <coughs> siblings. Mr. Winfield has four children and four great grandchildren and attended the Aiken County Public Schools and graduated from Martha Schofield High School in 1958. And whereas from 1955 through 58, Mr. Winfield played trumpet and baritone horns for the Schofield Marching Band and was selected in the South Carolina All-State Band in 1956 and 1957. And whereas Mr. Winfield played piano and organ for Augusta's own James Brown from 1959 through 1961 and also played organ and, and piano for the St. Peter's Baptist Church in Elko, South Carolina, where Mr. James Brown was a member of that church. And in 1962, Mr. Winfield entered the New York School of Music where he studied big band arrangements, writing, composing, and voices, earning an associate's degree in 1964 and a bachelor's degree in, in music in 1966. Mr. Winfield also studied music theory, jazz composition at the world-renowned Juilliard School of Music in New York. <clears throat> and whereas Mr. Winfield attended several gospel music workshops throughout the state of South Carolina and Georgia, in order to further diversify his musical genius in the gospel realm, he attended the Gospel Music Observatory of Nashville, Tennessee in July of 1991. Mr. Winfield graduated from the Clark School of Music in Augusta, Georgia in 1993, and his music can be heard playing with uh, piano or organ on several albums and CDs with King Curtis, Otis Redding, Chuck Jackson, Lonnie Youngblood, Benny King, and James Brown. Mr. Winfield is presently the Minister of Music and Choir Director for the Welcome Travelers Baptist Church and Bell Grove Baptist Church. And whereas Mr. Winfield's other accomplishments include 22 years in law enforcement, after serving four years as a correctional officer for the state of South Carolina, he joined the Aiken Department of Public Safety in 1979. He retired from the Aiken Department of Public Safety in 19 in July of 1997. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Rick Osborne of the City of Aiken and City Council, do hereby proclaim Saturday, June 4th, as John Henry Winfield Day, in appreciation and honor of his service to the community, and wish him well in his retirement years, doing what he loves best, and that is playing piano, and organ for, we for weddings, revivals, and other church and community functions. And again, this is signed by our mayor and all of the uh, city council members, with the exception of Steve Homoki, who is uh, on to untravel. Um, so Mr. Winfield, if you will accept this from us, right. mayor. Exactly. mayor. We'll, we'll actually, all those in favor? I'm sorry. No, no that's fine. And that's unanimous, of course. <coughs> and we'd like to ask Mr. Winfield to come down. I'd like to present that with, with Ms. Price, if we could. And the reason that this is dated June 4th was because this is the day that was celebrated, but we were not available during that day. <coughs> I was just telling Mr. Winfield I'm envious of the list of people he's played with, but uh, <laughs> of, course, of course I know he's proud for who he plays for. Right? <laughs> Congratulations to you, Mr. Winfield. Thank you. One Moving down the presentations. Tony, you have to follow that. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> this is a Mr. Mayor, excuse me. Mr. Winfield, do you have church members here? Just wonder. Will you all stand, please? I came out to be with him. Thank you so much. 
Don, Dick just said something that um, is probably true. You're always present at all of the city council meetings. Dick said you probably have attended more council meetings than we have. Oh. And that's certainly true. Look out now. Uh, it, but you don't have to bring a keyboard for, for Dick, though, to, to play. <laughs> and he's dressed better than some of us. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Thank you, John. Next on the agenda under presentation is a good friend of mine, Tony Ateca, and he's going to do a presentation regarding the Aiken Performing Arts. Tony, welcome. Thank you for being with us tonight. Good evening, Mr. Mr. Mayor and honorable members of the City Council. Uh, thank you for having us here today. I'm, I, I'm Tony Ateca. I'm a local banker and the president of Aiken Performing Arts. And I have with me Elizabeth Harm, who was the prior tourism director of the city of Aiken, who is a member of our board. Um, Elizabeth and I were just talking about um, working together to try to do some different things with Aiken Performing Arts in, in the form of reaching out to families and uh, perhaps doing a camp and things like that. So she's going to be a great asset to our board, uh, and we're proud to have her. Uh, Aiken Performing Arts celebrated its 10th anniversary last year, and as we enter into the second decade, we thought that it was appropriate to come to the city of Aiken and to thank you for the key partnership uh, that you have uh, participated in. Um, in particular, we wanted to thank you for you and your predecessors who had the vision to build um, the what's now the ACOM um, Performing Arts Theater. Um, and to invite groups like Aiken Performing Arts um, to bring musicians from out of town. Um, that building has been an asset to the community, but you continue to support us in many other ways. Uh, for instance, uh, you have provided an office for us at Rye Patch. Um, you also uh, help us transport artists when they come to town. Um, and you assist us with uh, marketing dollars through, through ATAX. So we are indebted to you for what we do, and we wanted to thank you for that. Um, Aiken is an incredible town, and for a small town, um, there's just a lot going on. Culturally, um, we're so proud that it's a diverse um, cultural, uh, op there's, there are so many diverse cultural opportunities here, and, and we like to play a part of that. Aiken Community Playhouse is, of course, a resident of Acom Theater, and they bring incredible local talent to the forefront. Um, and then there are groups like um, Joy of Aiken who um, bring in the finest from um, young um, art artists who are up and coming in, classic, in the classical music genre. Um, and in fact, um, Aiken Forming Arts was um, part of bringing Juilliard to town. In fact, the first three Juilliard performances came here because of Aiken Performing Arts and a Juilliard and Aiken, which is now Joy, um, was spawned from Aiken Performing Arts. But today we have our own, uh, our own little niche and that niche um, you know, is bringing world-class artists to town, um, incredibly talented people. We don't always bring name, uh, household names, like we're, we're not gonna bring Madonna or, or Miley Cyrus or yeah. Justin Bieber. Maybe some of you are glad, like me, that we're not going to do that. <laughs> but um, we do bring people of incredible caliber, and uh, it usually costs us about ten to twelve thousand dollars to bring an artist to town. Plus, we put them up in local um, hotels, we feed them at local restaurants and such, um, and. Uh, you know, we brought in uh, the uh, National Symphony Orchestra. We brought in name uh, um, people like uh, Frederica von Stada, um, who have uh, world renown in in, uh, in their areas uh, or their particular genres. Um, we're also touching students, and um, many of you know that that we go into the schools. Um, four out of five of our artists. Um, go into a local school um, and do part of their performances or have one-on-one -on -one time with students. Um, recently, we had uh, a student at North Augusta um, High School that was an autistic student who was profoundly touched by, um, by, by Jim Witter, who came to their school. And, and in fact, the principal came to us and said, uh, this is probably the best day he's ever had in school. Um, so we're proud of that. We're proud of what we do with um, bringing instruments 
in your attics. Uh, we have we brought about 172 instruments, uh, refurbished them, brought them into schools. That includes 21 pianos. Um, and uh, we like to think that we're, we're getting out, even um, past the borders of uh, the city of Aiken, but into the county, um, because we've really touched about 21 schools through that, um, through that opportunity. So again, we just wanted to thank you for being a part of that. We wanted to give you a little glimpse of what's coming up in our, um, in our upcoming season. Um, and we wanted to um, just thank you for partnering with us. So this, this season, um, we're bringing um, uh, a veteran from The Tonight Show, that's Pat Hazel. Um, he's endorsed by um, Jerry Seinfeld. We're bringing a group that um, was, were finalists on the NBC um, sing-off. We're bringing a, a Carnegie Hall veteran. Um, we're bringing the number one UK um, swing band, the number one swing band in the United Kingdom. Um, and we're bringing a, uh, the fi some finalists in the America, Scott Talent, um, who are regulars on the stage at, at um, Bronson, Missouri. So um, I think we've, if you'd queue up um, what, what we're doing this season, again, we want to thank you for um, pr making a profound difference in what we do. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. It's the Wonder Bread years. Bright blue popsicles. What flavor was that supposed to be? <laughs> What's that, Windex? Was it 2,000 flushes? You know, we didn't care. The Wonder Bread years is a hilarious production that gracefully walks the line between stand-up and theater. Look, my tongue is blue. It's blue, look. <laughs> it leaves audiences laughing and savoring the past like never before. Jerry Seinfeld says, this show has my funny seal of approval. Don't miss The Wonder Bread Years, starring comedian and Tonight Show veteran Pat Hazel. It's an unforgettable evening of genuinely funny Americana humor. So, come experience The Wonder. Not like it's hurt me before. Not like it's hurt me. Oh, I have something I know won't desert me. I'm not alone. Goes like this the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, the baffled king composing hallelujah. the top, had to stop, and that's what's bothering me. If you want to dance with indie pop, if you want to do swing, the joy of music is perfect. Countdown, yeah, countdown, yeah. Why make your big and so high? I love her, I love her just the same. When I'm pleased by the woman, countdown is her name. Countdown, yeah. <coughs> can you be on the... Three redneck tenors, a musical adventure. Princess Lady Luck till we finally struck Bonanza With a gun and a rope and a hat full of hope we planted a family tree
we look we look forward to an exciting season coming up. Thank you for that. Absolutely. Uh, moving down the agenda, uh, this is um, this list is number two. It's actually number three because of our addition. A proclamation designating June as Homeownership Month. Uh, is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Do we have a motion okay. and a second. I'm going to ask Councilman Duar if he would to read that proclamation for us. Whereas the month of June has been designated as National Home Ownership Month to support the goals and ideals of home ownership and recognize the importance of home ownership in building strong communities, and whereas home ownership is an important part of the American dream, and owning a home provides a source of stability, a shelter and safe place where families can prosper and children can thrive. And whereas home ownership encourages personal responsibility and strong values while creating more stable neighborhoods, civic minded residents, better schools, and less crime, and creating and maintaining housing that is affordable to individuals and families who live and work in the city of Aiken is crucial to ensuring continued strength and vitality. And whereas each year National Home Ownership Month is celebrated in the United States to encourage the benefits of owning and maintaining a home. And whereas the city of Aiken, along with other service providers and partners, support the commitment to the education, resources, and important steps in obtaining and retaining home ownership for families and individuals to safeguard their financial future and strengthen our community. Now, therefore, I, Rick N. Osmond, Mayor and City Council of the City of Aiken, South Carolina, to here pro hereby proclaim the month of June 2016 as National Home Ownership Month. Thank you, Councilman Dumar. Dumar. We have a motion and a second. All I so move. Oh, we already have yeah, already so all, all those I'm in sorry. favor? Nice try. And that's unanimous. Do we have someone here we could uh, present that to? Uh, representative? The realtors. All right, the realtors, Yay. absolutely. Yay. Yay. Councilman Dumar, would you mind? It's okay to give our realtors a hand, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. What an exciting time and a great proclamation. We're excited for all you do for our community. Uh, Mr. Mayor, right. 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 can they introduce, them? That's the we'll can they introduce themselves, the Board of Realtors? Can they what? Say introduce themselves. Oh, yeah, please. absolutely. Yes. Would y'all like to introduce themselves? I'm Christine Shelton. I'm the Association Executive at the Aiken Board of Realtors. And I'm Karen Burris, and I'm the 2016 President of the Board. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, Karen sold me my second house. <laughs> that I lived in for 10 years. She's been in the realtor business for a long time. <laughs> and I know it was a good house, right? It was a good house. <laughs> Moving down under presentations. There's a proclamation recognizing Second Baptist Church Development Corporation for receiving a house, Housing Achievement Award for Creative Partnerships and the Housing Development Award for DuPont Landing. Is there a motion? Mr. Mayor. We have a motion. Is there second. And a second. I'm going to ask Councilwoman Diggs if she would to read this proclamation for us tonight. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Whereas Second Baptist Community Development Corporation, CDC, in partnership with the Bennett Group and the Nehemiah Community Revitalization Corporation, CRC, was awarded both the Housing Achievement for Creative Partnerships and the Housing Development Award for DuPont Landing, and whereas the awards were presented by the South Carolina State Housing Finance and Development Authority at the 2016 Palmetto Housing Forum on April 20th, 2016, and whereas Second Baptist CDC received a Creative Partnership Award as a result of their leadership in creating 
a collaboration between Second Baptist Church, the City of Aiken, Nehemiah CRC, and Clemson University Real Estate Center to master plan and develop the 70-acre tract originally owned by Second Baptist Church. And whereas DuPont Landing is a subdivision of 44 single-family <coughs> homes built across from Aiken High School with an attractive community building and a large recreation area with the homes built under the tenant ownership option. And after 15 years, the tenants have the right to purchase their homes at potentially deep discounts. And whereas the South Carolina State Housing Finance and Development Authority in presenting the awards noted that DuPont Landing is the most outstanding Section 42 tenant ownership complex ever built in the state of South Carolina. And also, this is the first time a partnership has simultaneously received both the Housing Development and Creative Partnership Awards. Now, therefore, I, Rick N. Osborne, Mayor, and City Council of the City of Aiken, South Carolina, do hereby applaud and commend the Second Baptist Community Development Corporation and their partners for their great achievement in being awarded the Palmetto Housing Achievement Awards for DuPont Landing and thank them for their vision for this development and encourage them in their efforts to further develop the site. And this is signed by our mayor, the Honorable Rick Osborne, and all of city council, excluding Steve Homoki, who is presently out of the country on vacation. Thank you, Councilwoman Diggs. Appreciate that. This time, all those in favor of this proclamation? And of course, that's unanimous. Is there, is there someone here to represent? Bobby Ramsey. Bobby Ramsey. Ramsey. All right. Mr. Ramsey's here. That's right. There you go. Ramsey. I'll ask y'all guys I'm to come I'm down. Sorry. Okay. And the Nehemiah. <clears throat> this partnership that was put together shows everything that can be accomplished when you set together with a common goal to do good. And I think du the DuPont House Project is, is a prime example of, of something so positive in our community. And uh, I think as a city, we can say we're very thankful for the efforts that everyone put into this. And I think the proclamation says it, but thank you so much for what you've done for our city. And we hope to be up here with another award, hopefully, uh, <laughs> soon, because it's, it's a great start. Thank you. And I can, uh, I'd like to say <clears throat> that the Clyburn Center for Primary Care is proud that you chose that particular site to build these homes because when we set up in our break room for lunch and just for breaks during the day, we have the best view in Aiken, the view of some of the most beautiful, <coughs> affordable homes in this area. And we thank you so much for choosing that site. Find a way to charge you for that. <laughs> he, he said we had to find a way to charge you for that. <laughs> Uh, Congratulations on behalf of That's all the things. Nehemiah owner. Um, and the blue jacket. M Mr. Mayor, if Mr. Ramsey can introduce his partner to the audience, please. Tom Faulkner is the, was the president of the Nehemiah Corporation. He's now the vice president for development. I was demoted. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the vice president is now the president, and I'm the vice president after serving one year as, the, as a district governor of Rotary for the western half of the state. That did me in. <laughs> What's happened here. Mr. Mayor, if I can, I'd just like to recognize Mrs. Ramsour. Please stand. She is uh, and, and uh, one that you don't, don't make herself 
uh, visibly or obviously in the room, but she is a huge supporter. Uh, Natalie of, of Harvey, and she's in the background, but a strong force and, and uh, a strong partner to him. So we thank you. That concludes our presentation portion of our agenda. Moving down to old business, first is a discussion of appointees <clears throat> to various city boards, commissions, and committees. Uh, do we have any names for consideration? Uh, no, not at this time. Okay. Are there, are there any names to be moved forward from council? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, as <clears throat> you know, we got the uh, letter from Mr. Ray Vososky addressed to Mr. Johnson that uh, he's moving out of town, so there's a vacancy there. Uh, and uh, I have a nominee that I got via the uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce group with Mr. David Jamison there. And uh, one of the interested parties is Brian Coulter. And since this is a city council appointment, I put that name out for consideration. And I'll have the uh, form filled out for the next meeting. Okay. I, I should point out that I've asked that the, the uh, city consider eliminating that commission and turning total responsibilities over to the county. So I, I don't know what, when the city manager is going to put that on the agenda. Okay. Are there any other nominees for any other boards or appointments at this time? All right. Well, we'll consider that at our next uh, council meeting then. Right. Thank you, Councilman Ebner. Moving down, this is um, second reading and public hearing of an ordinance to sell 414 Fairfield Street Northeast. By title, this is an ordinance approving the sale of property located at 414 Fairfield Street to Barbara Lewis. Is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Okay, we have a motion, a second. I second. We have a second. Comments from staff. Uh, Mr. Mayor, at a recent Finance and Administration Committee meeting, staff was asked to conduct a pilot project and publicly advertise for bid three parcels. One parcel was 414 Fairfield Street Northeast, which was acquired via the City Council resolution from the Aiken County Forfeited Land Commission in April of 2015. We received one bid for 414 Fairfield Street Northeast for $2,000. Uh, after a review of the bid, we recommend acceptance. We did not receive bids yet on the other properties, but we have been uh, working with our friends at the Aiken County Board of Realtors uh, to systematically sell city property that we consider surplus and hope to have more properties to present to council for sale in the coming months. City Council approved this ordinance on first reading at the May 9th, 2016 meeting. For City Council consideration, the second reading and public hearing of an ordinance to sell 414 Fairfield Street, Northeast. Thank you, Mr. Clem. Comments from the audience? Comments from Council? All those in favor, second reading? And that's unanimous. Thank you. Moving down to new business. Number one, our new business. This is first reading of an ordinance to approve the sale of 895 Alfred Street Northeast by title, an ordinance approving the sale of 895 Alfred Street Northeast in Crossland Park subdivision. Is there a motion? I so move. Motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. Comments from staff. Mr. Mayor, we have an offer to purchase 895 Alfred Street Northeast uh, in Crosland Park. Uh, we have attached a copy of the, the appraisal that was done. The appraisal for the property shows an appraised value of $60,000. Staff has reviewed the purchase and recommends council approval. City Council consideration on first reading is approval of an ordinance to sell 895 Alfred Street Northeast. Uh, for $60,000 upon the terms and conditions set forth in the purchase and sales agreement. Our staff person, Emery Langston, is here to, to answer any questions that you may have. Okay, thank you. Are there any comments from the audience? Comments or questions from council? Just like to thank Emery for her hard work and, and uh, dedication to this project. How many houses do we have left, Emory? Is she still here? 
I think she out. stepped just stepped out. <clears throat> it's either five or six. I think it's five now. Okay, hey, someone from Realtors, do you know? Repeat the yeah. question. Emery, we were, she, she's like, no. Emery, the, she's, the question she's, was how, how many houses do we have left after this? Sorry. To Busted. We, <laughs> we were talking some good stuff. Um, we will have uh, six houses left mm -hmm. after 895. One of those houses that I am counting in that number is our um, public safety officer who does have a lease uh, to purchase over the course of, five, of, of a year. Okay. So on MLS, we will have five listings. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Emory. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Persuading? That's unanimous, thank you. Number 200 new business. This is gonna take a while. First reading of an ordinance adopting the latest editions <coughs> of the building codes with modification. By title, an ordinance to amend chapter 10, section 10-2 of the Aiken City Code of in Incorporate, the in in to incorporate the 2015 editions of the International Building Code with modifications, International Fire Code with modifications, International Fuel Gas Code with modifications, International Plumbing Code with modifications, International Mechanical Code with modifications, <coughs> International Energy Conservation Code, the International Property Maintenance Code with modifications, <coughs> the International Residential Code with modifications, and the 2014 edition of the International Electrical Code. Is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Mayor. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. Comments from staff. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the International Building Code Congress regularly updates and amends the International Building Codes. When it does so, the South Carolina Building Codes Council reviews these amendments and directs adoption of them by local governments. It is now time for us to adopt the most recent revisions to these building codes pursuant to the attached memo from building official Mike Jordan. Since council adopts these codes as part of our city code of laws, an ordinance is necessary to enact these recent revisions for construction occurring within the city limits of Aiken. For council consideration is first reading of an ordinance to adopt the 2015 building codes and the 2014 electrical code as presented by the International Building Code Congress and mandated by the state of South Carolina through its Building Code Council. Mr. Jordan is present this evening to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Mr. Flynn. Any comments from the audience? Any comments or questions from council? Yes, Mr. Mayor, this, uh, this is something that has happened every two years, I think, since I've uh, been on council. The last time we, we did it, um, um, I was a little concerned because we really don't have a lot of information of what we're doing. Um, while I'll vote to send this to second reading, I certainly would like more details on what these uh, uh, changes actually do. Um, many are not familiar with uh, Agenda 21, but those that are um, obviously have concern about the overreach of government reaching into into the city and the municipality, and this is the way they do it. So um, I, I can have it offline if somebody just wants to send me an email as to what these, uh, how many of them do we have, uh, eight uh, changes do. Sure. Uh, I, I would certainly appreciate it. But it's something that council ought to know what we're doing, and the state just telling us to do it doesn't cut it as far as I'm concerned. Can we put that together and maybe yeah. maybe see it, send that to all council members? Thank you, Mr. DeBar. Councilman DeBar. DeBar. Any other comments? Okay. All those in favor on first reading? And that's unanimous. Thank you. Number three under new business is a approval of CPST three funds for needs assessment of public safety headquarters building. Is there a motion? So moved, moved, Mr. Okay. I second. We have a motion and a second. Thank you. Comments from staff. Uh, Mr. Mayor, as part of our capital project sales tax program, we are undergoing a needs assessment for the public safety headquarters building at 251 Lawrence Street Northwest. 
This building was constructed in the mid-1970s and is in the need of major renovations or replacement. We issued a request for proposals and received 11 responses. An assessment team consisting of city staff members reviewed the documents and interviewed four finalists. After careful consideration, the assessment team recommends that Hussey Gay Bell of Duluth, Georgia be awarded the phase one analysis, which includes space planning analysis, site evaluation, and, concept, and conceptual plan options. Uh, Hussey Gay Bell quoted us a phase one cost of $23,000 for this project. Uh, the project will come from CPST 3. <clears throat> the Council consideration is a request to award a contract to Hussey Gay Bell for professional services for a needs assessment of the public safety headquarters. And as you know, our chief of public safety is here this evening to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Mr. Clinton. Any comments from the audience? Comments or questions from council? All right, all those in favor? On first reading? And that's unanimous, thank you. Number four in our new business, this is an approval of a bid for use of CPST money for paving city streets. Is there a motion? So move, Mr. Mayor. I second. We have a motion and a second. Comments from staff? Uh, Mr. Mayor, as part of our CPST 3 project, we conducted a bid opening to resurface streets uh, around the city. Uh, we have attached the list of streets that will be repaved. Uh, staff has reviewed the bids and recommends awarding the project to Beams Contracting Incorporated of Beach Island for up to $525,000 to include contingency. For City Council consideration is approval of a bid award for street paving <coughs> using CPST 3 uh, funds. You will find attached to the agenda a list of roads uh, that will be uh, repaired. Uh, and Mr. George Grinton is here this evening to answer any questions that you may have about this uh, project. Thank you, Mr. Clem. Any comments from the audience? Comments or questions from council? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, if I if I could read this list, there's no way the public gets it because I can't put it in my email and I don't think the Aiken Standard puts it in. It's not a long list. It's Colony Parkway from Price Avenue to Whiskey Road. It's Varden Drive from Trail Ridge to Hitchcock Parkway. Wingfoot Drive from Cardinal Drive to Pine Log Road. Hamilton Drive from Silver Bluff Road to Nielsen Street. Jackson Trace Lane from Cobbs Way to Bedford Place. Stonington Lane from Spencer Drive to the end. Middlebury East Lane from Spencer Drive to the end. Double Tree Lane from Spencer Drive to the end. New Haven Lane from Spencer Drive to the end. Melville Lane from Spencer Drive to the end. Hounds Lake Drive from Pine Log Road to Hitchcock Parkway. Robin Wood Drive from Trailwood Avenue <coughs> to Trailwood Avenue. And Trailwood Avenue from East Pine Log to the end. And finally, Popular Place from Cherry Drive to the end. Thank you for that, Councilman Navar. I think it's important that that be listened. Uh, yes, sir, Councilman Navar. Uh, this, this, what I recall, that uh, the bid came in under the allotted amount in the what was in the capital project sales tax three. Check with George. I think it was. I'll ask. About I'll ask uh, George Gritton to come up and answer that. Two hundred thousand less, or maybe it was twenty thousand less. I can't recall. Um, after we complete this paving, we'll have approximately 700 and some odd thousands dollars left in the CPST3 uh, fund. We were trying to allocate approximately $500,000 a year for, over the okay. next few years. So next year we may divide that 700,000 and a half. We'll, okay. we'll kind of assess that's the needs. What I, I couldn't recall the reason we had done that, but no, I'm, that's the right thing to do. Okay. Thank you. Will we be resurfacing any of the streets on Northside? Uh, we did um, an extensive amount last year, well, at least we did with the, um, the, the um, state allocation through Crossland Park. Uh, what we're doing, this is a worst first scenario, and as you know, we're you know, contemplating trying to maybe transition to something that would be more permanent on a, on a, 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 a progressive uh, maintenance uh, plan. So uh, we'll, we'll assess you know, needs for next year. And not These are city streets only. They're not many city streets, streets only, on the correct. north side, Gail. Hmm? 
but some of but the ones that yeah that are i'm just wondering if there, they intend to do anything. yeah there's a mile or two yeah they roads and cross the park Stu. right i i knew that but i was asking was were there any city roads and i know there's not many this but. was just a prioritization that was uh, based on uh, um, the worst case roads okay thank you thank you george any other comments questions all right all those in favor and that's unanimous thank you moving down to petitions and requests number one this is a request to place banners in downtown area promoting the farmers market in the alley event is there a motion i so move second a motion and a second comments from staff uh, yes mr mayor our uh, parks recreation and tourism uh, is, uh, department is requesting permission to place two banners in the downtown area promoting the farmers market in the alley farmers market event is to be held on thursdays beginning june 2nd and ending august 11th we're requesting permission to place two banners in the downtown area on the extended arms of the traffic light poles with one banner at the intersection of Lawrence and Park and one banner at the intersection of South Boundary and Chesterfield. Council consideration is per permission to place two banners in the downtown area promoting the farmer's market in the alley on Thursdays from June to August. Great. Comments from the audience? Comments from Council? Just real quick comment, Mr. Mayor. This is something that uh, uh, Ms. Price and I have both spoken out about before uh, in favor of these kinds of uh, banners to publicize some of the great activities that are going on, not only downtown, but all over Aiken. There's a, there's a real uh, sort of old-fashioned feel to those, to those banners, and it, and it communicates, no offense to our friends at the newspaper, but it communicates sometimes a little better than, than the daily print. Um, and so I, I applaud this. Uh, initiative. Thank you, Councilman Mary. Any other comments? All right, all those in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you. Moving down to number two. This is a request for approval of a resolution authorizing the City of Aiken to exempt Owens Corning from the City's annexation policy for the provision of water and sanitary sewer services. By title, a resolution authorizing the City of Aiken to exempt Owens Corning from the City's annexation policy for the provision of city water and sanitary sewer services. Is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Mayor. I have a motion. Is there a second? I second. Thank you. Comments from staff? Uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Tim Vaughn, who is the project manager with Penta Engineering, has requested on behalf of Owens Corning that Owens Corning be exempt from the city's policy for the provision of city water and sanitary sewer services. Mr. Vaughn explains in his letter that Owens Corning plans to make some modifications in the way the wastewater from the facility is handled. Modification of their sanitary sewer system will not require additional infrastructure from the city of Aiken and will not cause an increase in the flow of wastewater into the city's sanitary sewer system. For many years, the city has been providing water and sewer service to the facility, which is located outside of the city on uh, South Carolina 302. The city's policy for the provision of city water and sanitary uh, sewer service allows city council to not require annexation of industrial water and sanitary sewer customers, where council determines that annexation would not be in the best interest of the city. Mr. Jesse Edgar of Owens Corning will be present at the council meeting to answer any questions that you may have. For council consideration is a resolution authorizing the city of Aiken to exempt the property known as Owens Corning from the city's requirement to file a new application for water and sanitary sewer service and for future annexation due to the modification of the present sanitary sewer system. And I would assume that Mr. Vaughn is with us this evening. Mr. Edgar. Edgar. Sorry? Yeah, Mr. Edgar. Okay. Here. Yes. Sorry. Right. Any comments from the audience? Any questions or comments from council? We do have uh, Mr. Jesse Ed Edgar with us today. Are there any questions at this time? I, I, I don't understand why it needs to be done. I'm, I'm not against it. I'll support it. But he's not doing anything outside his own plant area. Yeah. So why, why is it that we even have to consider this? It's a, it's a, it's a modification 
to what they're sure, doing yeah. now. Presently, they were running a sewer line from their building into the property next door. The two properties, if I'm understanding it correctly, the two properties used to be owned by the same company. At some point, the property next door was sold to another company, but they continued running it that way. And now that they're redoing their plant, they've decided they need to just put it directly into the sewer right. system. So since they're modif modifying their system, it would ordinarily require a, a trip to planning commission to see whether or not you're going to require annexation. I mean, that's, that's what your policy is. Okay. We're, we're um, redoing your policy to allow you to do this exemption. Okay, so, thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments from council? All those in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you for being with us, Mr. Edgar. We appreciate it. Number three under petitions and requests, this is a request for revision to water and sewer policy for annexation by title or resolution to amend city council policy regarding requests for water and sanitary sewer services to unincorporated areas. Is there a motion? So move, Mr. Mayor. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. At this time, we'd actually like to, I'd like to entertain a motion to send this to, to, um, one of one of our um, committees to, to study um, our I think we, we, we finance, uh, the asked, finance administration yeah the finance administration committee at this time to look at look at this um, if I could just add mr. mayor one of the the, the major reason we're suggesting it go to a committee uh, is that it doesn't require two readings and I think most would agree that these tend to be controversial issues. We want to make sure that the general public is aware of the fact that we're talking about a change in the annexation policy. But so by sending it to a committee, the committee could have a workshop or a forum and allow people to come in and learn about what the changes are and make recommendations before it appears before the council. I think it's important to explain what what we're uh, what this what this does. Uh, essentially, if if uh, as I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong. If you live in a contiguous property and there's a change in ownership, uh, then that um, property must come into the city. If there's an it must be annexed to the city. There's two exceptions. Uh, one is property transferred to a surviving spouse, and two is property zoned for industrial uses. Mm -hmm. Did I get that right? That's, 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 that's a pretty good summary of it. Yeah. And some folks will obviously not be in favor of it. So the reason it's coming to the administrative committee rather than a resolution, as the mayor says, a resolution, it's done. Uh, we certainly want to have public input. So it'll, it'll come before the Finance and Administration Committee, and I'm not sure yet when I'll schedule that meeting, but it will be soon. We want to make sure, if we could, as chairman of that, I'm going to ask you, Councilman DeWar, make sure um, there's obviously a representation from the real, real estate uh, community. They, they've already stepped out, but... Uh, ah. <laughs> oh, schedule with them also. Okay. So, is is there a motion to move that to committee, uh, Mr. Mayor? <clears throat> uh, I'll amend the motion uh, to pass this on the uh, for, uh, resolution reading that uh, it be sent to the Finance and Administrative Committee for review and additional discussion and presented later to Council. Okay. Very good. So we have an amendment. I need to. Who, se who seconded this motion? I think I did. I second it. You, no. second, you second the amendment? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So we have that. So we can just one vote. Yep. Okay. All those in favor, send it to committee at this time. And that's unanimous. Thank you. And the members of that committee are Councilwoman Diggs, Steve, you Councilman Amoki, and, and myself. And we'll make sure that all of council and certainly our citizens are aware of when that will be. So thank you. Uh, well, this, uh, I was uh, assuming, if I may comment, we sure want to get this to the young lady that was here that accepted the award tonight. Mm -hmm. And I, I asked her if she was going to comment on this, but evidently it must not be too hot a topic with him because she didn't. It'd, it'd be a good just, idea. So, just so council's aware, um, I have pointed out to uh, the city manager and assistant city manager uh, and the planning director, you know, the the this could have a, a, a it could be difficult if it's not presented to the people who have the best ability to present it to the citizens who would be most affected by this. The realtors are certainly part of that crowd. Uh, obviously, uh, closing attorneys that do real estate closings uh, would also need to be aware. 
um, so that the information does get out to those people so they can tell them this is a possibility when this comes up. Is there a, uh, an attorney's group in town that we could formally notify? The, uh, we, we, we do a, uh, an email uh, bar-wide for all okay. of the Aiken County bar members, and so that could easily be presented to them. Also, all of the, uh, the real estate lawyers have a box over at the RMC office, and we can easily put a flyer in those boxes so they get information. Okay. So. Who, uh, will that, uh, who will do that? Uh, I'm just asking to be sure that follows up. Is, is your office via Mary Gwynn going to do that, or how is that going to get we, there? We, I mean, that, that's going to really be a staff function. And I'm, I'm certainly happy to assist the staff with, as far as the lawyers go. That's, that won't be a problem. All right. And then we need to uh, notify the young lady that was well, here earlier we'll today. She would be the and, one that would get to yeah. all the real. And, and also our, our planning our planning commission, um, Chairman uh, Liz Stewart is here, and I think the planning commission should certainly weigh in and have a, and have a say you, in this as well. So. I think I misunderstood. You're asking me to uh, let them know of, of Mr. Well, yeah, Duarte's meeting. We can handle that. We'll, we'll, meeting. We'll, get, we'll get that together. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll get that together, certainly. That's probably the two main groups, and it ought to spread from there. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, it shouldn't be forgotten that the development community is going to care about this. I mean, this, as much as anything, has an impact on development. It probably would be appropriate for the development committee to be talking about it even. but. Uh, but I would encourage you, as y'all do, discuss this in committee to try to include uh, so you can hear from and also share with uh, a number of developers who might both be able to communicate amongst their peers, but also that, so that you can get whatever input they might have to offer. I, I think this is a pretty, pretty good solution. I like the way it's drafted. I like the suggestion. So I, I think it will be reasonably well received. But I'd certainly encourage you to get their input. We and I'll, I'll certainly ask the Aiken Standard to work uh, to work with us <coughs> to get a good story out, so everybody knows what's going on. We want it vetted by all impacted. Yeah. I think the other thing is, uh, you know, if there's uh, other suggestions how to do this, you know, I don't. Uh, this was submitted in this basis, but uh, talking with other people and uh, with the city attorney, you know, if there's some other way to do it or how to get it done easier, we'd be glad to uh, listen to that. Very good, very good. I'd like to add two things. We're going to formally recognize, but I want to thank the uh, committee that did such a great job on the parade. Uh, what, a week, week, two weeks now, a week and a half ago. It was terrific. Um, also, I, I, I alluded that she was here, but um, our, the chairman of the planning commission is here. Liz, stand up for a second, if you would. Liz has a family member, a grandson, who was just drafted uh, in the 12th round from USC, Taylor Widener. So congratulations. Uh, to the Yankees. To the Yankees, that's right. So congratulations. And, uh, <laughs> played at South Aiken, and we're all very proud and share, sharing the excitement. Taught him everything he knows. That's right. I, I've seen her curveball. You're right. Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, I have uh, one thing. Yes, um, ma'am. I'd like to um, thank and recognize um, Ricky Brown, from Aiken Department of Public Safety. Um, and I know Cynthia Mitchell was not here, but um, Ricky um, sponsored a safety walk on Saturday from 10 to 1 in Crossland Park. And he has a new initiative called Fight Crime Behind the Blinds. And this is an opportunity for residents to actually call um, uh, public safety, feel comfortable about calling public safety when they see different things happening in the community and doing it in a way that uh, they can be anonymous and not right. uh, be afraid that there's going to be some reper repercussions. So I'd like, Ricky, stand up. You're hiding back there in the corner in the dark. But Ricky had several other law enforcement officers out there with him on Saturday. And, and, and I'd just like to thank um, Public Safety for playing a big part in uh, making pe people in this community feel safer, especially in the Crossland Park area. I, I can't say enough about um, how much I appreciate them and how safe I feel because of their presence. So I thank you. And Emory, too, I know you're very involved with that, all of those neighborhood services initiatives, and I thank you as well. Very good. Thank you. Anything else for the good? 
Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. We have a motion to second. All those in favor, please stand up.